Hey there, Aaron Nabus here, and before we get to the episode with Matt Dunford, I just want to say a thank you to all who attended our Empowered, How Indie Creators Build Universes and Communities panel at the recent Black Comics Day. I'd also like to send a big shout out to event organizer and owner of Kid Comics and good friend of the show, Keith and Jones, for giving us an opportunity to be part of it. The panel was well received, and we've been asked to do it again at another event. Details to come, so stay tuned. If you've been a longtime listener of the show, then you'll know of my involvement with the International Mobile Film Festival. I am proud to announce that the Hall H Show is a sponsor for this year's festival, which takes place on April 27th and 28th, 2019, in sunny, hopefully, San Diego, California. If you're interested in going, please go to internationalmobilefilmfestival.com. We'll have founder Susie Botello on again to discuss it really soon. San Diego Comic Fest is happening March 7th through the 10th, 2019, and we can't wait. We hope you enjoy our conversation with Chairman Matt Dunford. Hey, fellow nerds and geeks, thank you so much for tuning into the Hall H Show podcast. Aaron Naboose here, and along with my co host, Alex Benedicto. Hey, how's it going? We are the voice of independent creators. It's the start of the convention season, and I couldn't think of a better way to welcome it um, than with inviting back uh, the current chairman of one of our favorite cons, San Diego Comic Fest, Matt Dunford. Matt Dunford, you really brought this dork back in. Don't you know that guy just never shuts up about comics and dorky stuff and Pokemon and Spider-Man? Like, you know, why, why would you invite that guy on your show? Why? <laughs> There's so many better people than him. I don't think so. He doesn't do anything except mansplain stuff. <laughs> uh, the emphasis at uh, Comic Fest is on comics, science fiction, and movies served up with a sense of community that brings professional writers and artists together with fans in an environment of creative exchange. Uh, this year's San Diego Comic Fest takes place March 7th through the 10th at the Four Points by Sheraton on Arrow Drive here in San Diego, California. Each year's San Diego Comic Fest has a theme, such as the celebration of Jack Kirby's 100th birthday or the 200th anniversary of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. This year's theme will be the celebration of when science fiction became science fact. It's the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. Ah, yes, the Apollo 11 moon landing. So when you look at comics throughout the 1950s and the 1960s, there was that prolific theme of space travel. And... In 1969, that's when it all became actual fact. But then when you get into the 70s, you realize it's like, yay, we did it. Now we're going into other stuff. We're getting into more horror stuff. We're getting into the, uh, like, you know, a little more fantasy era stuff in the 1970s. But throughout the 1950s and the 1960s, that whole theme of space travel, it really did dominate things. And it really just set the tone for comics there. And, I mean, think about it. Look at Fantastic Four number one. What were they doing? going into space. Mm -hmm. Them going into space basically set the Silver Age in motion for comic for comics as they were. I mean, you could also argue about the whole thing of, you know, Julius Schwartz creating uh, The Flash and then the Justice League. But of course, I mean, I like to think of the of Fantastic Four number one as that moment where the Silver Age in comics really got going. And of course, it all became about space travel. It was about the space age and everything and anything, especially like those Wally Wood science fiction type stuff, the Al Williamson. I love those classic 1950s and 60s comics that were just all space themed. And so for us to be able to celebrate the 50th of the moon landing, that's just a wonderful theme. And of course, from people who say it's not comics, oh no, trust me, it very much is comics. Speaking of comics, um, I mean, the, you mentioned the Fantastic Four. I mean, uh, I, I remember being a kid, I was like enamored by the first time I saw, I read the Fantastic Four at my cousin's house. I mean, how was it for you? You know, when I first got started in comics, of course, you start off as a spy. I started off as a Spider-Man fan mm -hmm. and then an X-Men fan. And then, you know, in the 
backs of trading cards that I was picking up in the early 1990s. So, you know, there'd be these Fantastic Four stories. So I'd eventually start getting into Fantastic Four. And the Fantastic Four thing that really stood out for me was their villains. They were these larger than life, like aliens that were threatening to destroy the planet. And it's just, the, they just seemed like, you know, how do they get through this every time? Because these are actually regular super powered folks, but they always found a way to save the day and everything that went on. And so over the years, I became more seasoned with things in the Fantastic Four, with um, the Stan and Jack stories, with the John Byrne material. And of course, my personal favorite, the Mark Wade, Mike Waringo material, which for me, those are the three, that's the trifecta of Fantastic Four stories. And Mark Wade said it best that there is a successful way to write the Fantastic Four. It is a superhero comic. It, no, it is a it is a science fiction series masquerading as a superhero comic. At the start of it, back when when Stan and Jack were doing it, it wasn't a yeah it was a superhero team, but it was a science fiction story. It was a science fiction story that emerged in a time when people were still fascinated by monsters, and so that's why the cover featured these giant monsters on the front. You actually featured a monster on the team, The Thing. So it was the time where comics were still very much with a space age theme, but still very fixated on monsters, but evolving in back into superheroes. So it was that giant turning point in 1961 with Fantastic Four number one that encompassed all of that. And you see it all there within that first issue. Nice. Um, and why was it specifically important that you chose Apollo 11 Moon Landing as this year's theme? Because... I mean, you could have chosen the Brady Bunch or... We know. could have chosen the Brady Bunch <laughs> or we could have done things, but we, we like to pick these historically significant events and historically significant figures. Stuff that is... that encompasses not just comics, but science fiction as well, and movies and all these things that crosses over into all of these genres that we emphasize. So it's picking something that you know covers that ground and not just dominates one thing. I mean, two years ago when we did the Kirby Centennial, we talked about Kirby's influence on movies, Kirby's influence on animation. He wasn't just the king of comics. That guy had some stuff that got around and influenced countless people all over the world. And of course, last year with the 200th anniversary of Frankenstein, Frankenstein, of course, he has sent the creation of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein essentially created the concept of science fiction, using science to tell your fiction. And then Frankenstein bl bled over into comics, into films, into countless stories and countless depictions. And we got to cover the history of Frankenstein along the way and how it influenced everything from the Hulk to Hanna-Barbera cartoons like Frankenstein Jr. and just so much of its rich 200 year history, even like influencing zombie culture and the concept of the mad scientist, all of that originated with Frankenstein. So you need to hit on these very culturally significant events that are culturally significant, but also pop culturally significant. And I think that's important too. Um, I mean, seeing the segue between science fiction to science fact and seeing how, how you know, you, you've picked uh, sort of events that have affected, you know, mankind. Um, and I remember watching Neil deGrasse Tyson, he was talking about how in the exploration for space, that sort of bled into advancements and in other things too. Like when you go to the hospital, you know, all the, all the X-ray machines and MRI machines are based off of technologies that were produced during the space race. Yeah, because I mean, the whole thing is there, the space race actually did make mankind incredibly competitive with the United States versus the Soviet Union, not just so much in an arms race, but in a technological race, because, you know, we're just trying to say, we can be better than you. It, we may not be actually at war, but we can develop our technology better than you. We can develop our economy better than you. And so it's that ferocious competition that actually simulated things. And of course, with Sputnik launching into space first. And of course, the story of Laika, well, we won't get into Laika, unless you're, you know, a Cosmo fan for my Guardians fans, where are they at? Um, <laughs> but Cosmo the dog, right? Yeah, Cosmo the dog. <laughs> kind of basically subtly based on Laika. Um, but it was that moment where America stepped up its game, got these rockets into space, and planted that flag on the moon. And if you say otherwise, 
Buzz Aldrin will knock you out. Exactly. I was about to <laughs> mention that. <laughs> is, is he going to make an appearance at uh, this year's Sound of Comic Fest? Who knows? <laughs> Uh, I guess we can shift the back, uh, shift the topic back to the to this year's Comic Fest. Um, you're back at the uh, at the Four Points. Yes, we're back at the Four Points Sheraton. We've uh, had a little hiatus, but now it's uh, we're back there. And you know, previously the uh, place was go- undergoing some renovations, and now the place has been outfitted with some very beautiful roofs and new layouts, great new bar scene. So it's like while it was taking a year off getting its renovations done, it has been cleaned up very nice. So now we've had a trial run at that venue before, but now we know the perfected standpoint with additional parking provided, um, new layout. We have you know lengthier evening panels and that sort of thing, a lot of, enter- a lot of night entertainment along the way. And each year I just try to make San Diego Comic Fest better than it was before. And you might recall last year, that's when Forbes called us America's best small convention. So now that's that's a tough act to follow, but I'm still trying to cultivate things through with the goal of making San Diego Comic Fest into America's best convention. Nice. And I think you do a lot uh, with the community outreach as well. I am nothing without community. People say, oh, you're the chairman. You do everything. Nope, nope. I, leadership is nothing if you don't have reliable people to fall back on. I'm so happy that there's a great outpouring of volunteers that gives their all to help out with San Diego Comic Fest. I am so happy that San Diego has the best stores around that, you know, showcase us and, you know, promote flyers. And we're happy in turn to help out these stores. I mean, places like Southern California Comics, Now or Never, 138 Comics. I mean, these places are just wonderful in showing their support for us and their support for, and our support for them. We'd like to host events there we'd like to just unite this community and you know i like to jump jump on all the podcasts because when you read a comic first thing you want to do is talk about it with someone what if you had no community to talk about it with that would just suck and so i as you can tell i like to talk about comics quite a bit and i love just you know going to these stores i love mingling i love going in with new books i mean you know sure there's stores that'll have a nice selection you get them you get in you get out but i like those stores where it feels like an episode of cheers where you go on and you just have a good time and you feel that community vibe they there, help you you help name. them and you and it's like you know what i'd rather make a friend than make a profit because like this is just how i am i like i'm a geek at heart mm-hmm. and it was nice to see um we just sat in on today's volunteer meeting and it's nice to see like you had a pretty good uh, showing and I, I recognize the faces of, of some people there and, and from, yeah. from past uh, now Fest. like today was a little more business oriented one we had to get down to things because we have a month away so it was not so much bouncing ideas off like we did in previous meetings but it's just like very agenda focused and so it's like for me it felt a little stiffer than it usually does but it's like this is what we got to do we got to do this we got to do that we got to get all over the place and get this stuff done and i work hard at the same time and of course i always like bringing in so many people and hearing ideas and meeting people along the way but that these people are coming in to show their support and and, to, and hear these ideas and it's just so wonderful that that they're coming to help out and i could not be happier for it mm-hmm. yeah we're looking forward to it um this year's theme uh, what, what kind of events do you have that are sort of apollo 11 based well one thing we've always done in recent years is you might notice on our guest list we always bring in a uh we have a little special guest section of scientists who come in. So we've been bringing in some people from the Jet Propulsion Lab that NASA's doing, Air and Space Museum, as well as physicists and engineers. So we like to take these people and put them on panels and have them talk with actual, say, science fiction authors and talk about the science fact of things. So science fact versus science fiction. So in the past years, this has been a very entertaining mix of things. Like I've had a uh, last year, I brought in a friend of mine, Mr. Uh, Ron Coleman, who I discovered him at IDW Science Nights, where he would talk about like the biology of Godzilla and the biology of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So I had the idea to put him on a panel with our science fiction guest of honor, Nancy Cress, where she talked about the science fiction of. Frankenstein while he talked about the science fact about how to there's how there are these certain medicines and techniques to actually reanimate dead tissue and how like how would a zombie outbreak work and that sort of thing and so this was wildly entertaining stuff and the audience was really loving it and I I gotta say it's always just been a great mix of things when you have that coming in because 
panels where you learn something new, where you're informed and entertained are always the best ones. And I'll make sure that every single panel that we do is just nonstop. It's got to be A-grade material. Mm. Um, how soon will the uh, programming be up? We're looking to have things up within a week because we do like to have the programming up roughly a month within schedule. Like last year, it was very... I know we didn't get out until about like roughly a week before because we were still actually getting new guests added in. There's mm -hmm. like these big names that say, hey, can I be a guest? Hey, can I be a And of course, that means you have to finagle the schedule around. And of course, we don't like to post stuff till it's all set in stone. And that's the that's the thing that we got to do there. So there's that problem that people want to jump on board, but sometimes we don't always have room for any, everyone because I do like to say, I don't say no to anyone. I'm always bringing in so many people. And like I said, I am forging community with this, but it's like sometimes as a small intimate convention, we don't have room as much room as we would like to. Mm -hmm. I know our good friend Arlen Schumer is going to be doing four visual lectures. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Arlen Schumer, once again, is coming back after uh, he couldn't make it last year because he was doing a tour through Israel. And so he's not on vacation this year. So he was actually quite enthusiastic about coming back to San Diego Comic Fest. And he's got four visual lectures that he's coming through with. So he's got a visual lecture on Steve Ditko. He has 60 years of the Twilight Zone. He has 50 years of Jim Steranko's Captain America and 50 years of Neil Adams' Batman. So anyone who knows Arlen knows that he puts his all and his greatest enthusiasm into those visual lectures and that they are wildly informative and entertaining. Most definitely. Can't, can't wait for those. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I was going to ask you about the guests, but I would be remiss if I didn't, uh, you know, I guess mention Bat and Lash and his untimely passing. Yeah. What can I say? It sucks. Batten Lash was the closest thing to a father figure I had in this community. He always was a guy who took the time for me. We were at all the big events together. He was always the best dressed guy in the room and I was always the second best dressed guy. And he was always happy to give me a fashion tip on how to wear my tie bar, how I could tie my tie, my tie a little tighter, um, why this color tie works with another one. And on top of that, we bonded over old Ditko Spider-Man stuff. He would tell me stories about Steve Ditko that I never knew before. and. It, when he spoke, when he talked, I listened to every single word and I hung on every single word of it. And he was always just nice to me and forthcoming. I'd be on Adams Avenue, sipping a cup of coffee. I'd see him on his bike. I'd hail him down. We'd chat over coffee for a bit on his way to his studio. He would always take the time to talk comics with me and just have a great time. And then, you know, a couple of years back, he had a stroke. They found out it was brain cancer. They do the surgery on him. He comes back. He was operating about, I'd say, 60% of the baton that he was. He got up to about 85 or 90% of the baton that it was. And then the brain cancer comes back, and now baton's not with us anymore. We will be hosting a tribute to the late, great baton Lash. will be a lot of collaborators, people who worked with him. And his widow, Jackie, will be leading this discussion. So we are going to pay tribute to to a man I truly respected. He was with San Diego Comic Press from the start, and it's just a little little more painful that he won't be with us for it this year. I agree. I mean, I didn't know him too well, but each time we talked, you know, he definitely made time to to uh, give you his his ideas and his thoughts. Yeah, he was a wonderful guy, and not only that, he was just a talented creator too. Um, we didn't always align on things politically, but you know, he was always friendly with everyone, and you know, you know, just people are going to have disagreements through the year. But you know, he was always friendly, forthcoming, open with everyone. He was a guy who not only talked the talk, but he walked the walk too. And I will say, I do think he is responsible for the greatest comic book crossover in history: Archie meets the Punisher, <laughs> which is the most wildly entertaining story it should not work but it does <laughs> that's pretty crazy um i guess we can go ahead and run down um some of the guests that'll be showing up uh, this year's guest of honor is sergio aragones sergio aragones the world's greatest living cartoonist will be our guest of honor at san diego comic fest i cannot tell you how thrilled i am that sergio accepted an invitation to this event because there's not a person on earth who doesn't like the work of Sergio Aragonis. Even some of the people that you might argue is, oh, well, what if this guy is the greatest cartoonist? Even I think most every cartoonist would concede that, that Sergio is the greatest living cartoonist there. 
because everything he does is so funny and so entertaining and so detailed and so great. He's such a nice, welcoming guy. And to have him on our show, and not only that, he's going to be celebrating his 60th year at Mad Magazine with us. Wow. I don't believe he's been cartooning for that long, but he, you know, he actually started cartooning with crayons when he was a little kid and just started drawing all over the walls and just never stopped. He just loves drawing and cartooning and doing all this. And so we are so happy to have him as our guest of honor. Yeah, I mean, I always look forward to the Quick Draw panel at San Diego Comic-Con when he's there. Yeah. Sadly, Quick Draw is not going to be at, uh, at uh, this event. It's more of a Comic-Con staple. <laughs> But Sergio will be delivering some wonderful programming, and you can come by and see him. Come give him a hug. Take a picture with him. He is the greatest guy around. Cool. Uh, is there any other guests that you want to sort of spotlight? Well, you know, in recent years as chairman of San Diego Comic Fest, I give my all to the event in a leadership role of what I think is best suited for the community. And so I don't bring my personal fanboy into things. But this year, you better believe I am taking my personal fanboy into things with the 25th anniversary of the Spider-Man animated series That's with right. series creator John, John Semper. Semper. <laughs> so anyone who knows me knows I tell the story of how I was an eight-year-old boy who had his mind blown by the Spider-Man episode Night of the Lizard on November 19th, 1994. That just put my mind in overdrive and turned me into the biggest Spider-Man addict that you have ever seen and things have not slowed down at all so here we are celebrating spider-man at 25 and i can't believe it's been that long it seems like only yesterday i mean your you know oftentimes collaborator jason lethard actually re had a recording of that first episode that he made he sat me down and watched and i was describing like the commercials that were coming on and all that sort of thing and it's like i still remember everything that happened in that episode like it was yesterday <laughs> and cool. i cannot be more thrilled to have John back for it. We will be doing a spotlight on John Semper's career in animation. We will be doing a look at Spider-Man at 25. And we just added this into the mix because I'm just saying it right now. We will be doing true origins of the Spider-Verse. How John created it first with the Spider Wars cartoon, the final, the final episodes of the Spider-Man cartoon. Nice. That should be fun. Um, you have a, actually a, quite a few of uh, animation, animated related uh, guests showing up. Oh yeah, we're big into cartoons too. Some of our um, big time animation guests, we are bringing in the three tuners. In recent years, you may uh, recall that uh, legendary animator Willie Ito has come to the show. You might know Willie as the guy who animated the spaghetti scene in Lady and the Tramp. He also created Hong Kong Fooey, mm. and you know, he's worked on Looney Tunes and several Disney works. So he thought it would be cool if he brought some of his friends along, like Tony Benedict, who used to write for the Flintstones and the Jetsons back in the day, and Huckleberry Hound, and a bazillion Hanna-Barbera cartoons. And um, also just... Uh, Along the way, who else will we have with this return? Oh yeah, Jerry Eisenberg is coming back, and you know he used to, you know, be the producer for Johnny Quest, Jetsons, Huckleberry Hound, like Thundar the Barbarian, Plastic Man, a lot of those Ruby Spears type of animation stuff. So um, these guys are like they're in their 90s now. So take advantage of a visit to them, and the fact that they're up and kicking and doing this great tour around, I could not be more thrilled. You also have some guests coming from abroad, from Mexico and Japan. Oh, yes. Um, you might remember Hiroshi Kanatani is coming back. You know, he's an officially licensed Toho artist for Godzilla. So he does some really amazing Godzilla stuff. And, and awesome, I mean, awesome kaiju stuff. Yeah. yeah, all that kaiju stuff that he was doing. I mean, I couldn't help but pick up original yeah, kaiju I stuff picked, from I him last year. I picked up one, too. <laughs> yeah, that's like, aren't they so good? And so he's coming back on board, and I would like to do a uh, – I'm still arranging a kaiju panel, still putting that together. So I can't say the finalization of it, but I'm still – I'm going to be incredibly thrilled once this goes down. Because, I mean, who doesn't like giant monsters. <laughs> definitely. Um, I mean, it would be appropriate with uh, Godzilla coming out pretty soon. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Uh, we got, uh, you know, some more Godzilla up and along the way. And so just like that's it's a perfect reason for the season. <laughs> um, I know you're a big fan of Lalo Alcaraz. Yes, I am a very big fan of Lalo Alcaraz. I really like his cartooning. And um, he did also serve as a cultural consultant on the on the uh, Pixar film Coco. So you know that's in, so he had like the Los Cucarachas uh, stuff all over um, tagged up in the uh, in the in the afterlife world. So it was you could see his footprint all over that movie, and it's so nice to have him come back. So we're bringing him on board as 
not only as an international creator, but also as a political cartoonist as well. So we'll be doing some programming on political cartooning alongside with uh, David G. Brown, who does the uh, cartooning for The Sentinel, and also Shannon Wheeler, the creator of Too Much Coffee Man, who actually does stuff like... Um, you know, he's also a New Yorker cartoonist, and he also did the uh, graphic novel Shit My President Says, the illustrated tweets of Donald Trump. So <laughs> that makes for an interesting mix of things with our, pro with our political cartoons, because I don't like to omit editorial cartooning within newspapers and, you know, also done online. It is an area that should be celebrated in the realm of comics. We celebrate all comics, not just, you know, superhero stuff. Speaking of comics, um, I mean, is, is the list for Artist Alley set? The list for Artist Alley is pretty set, with I think a total of 64 creators oh, wow. having booths there, and still a wait list of people trying to get in. I tried to make more space for everyone, but unfortunately, just like you know, it's kind of a back and forth with the hotel, and of course, they it's their property, so it's like I would like to make more room, but um, them's the breaks. But we have a solid Artist Alley with. Like I said, it's over 60 creators in the Artist Alley. Also, the flourishing dealer hall where you have you know some of the finest dealers in Southern California coming out and about selling you comics, toys, all that junk along the way. And I'm pretty sure I'm just going to be going into debt with all the stuff because I could like just be finding new <laughs> stuff every day that I wanted. Still hunting down to the last second where I finally got that Urkel doll that I was looking at for all those years. And yes, I love my Urkel doll I got at Comic Fest. That was awesome. Yeah, I'm going to start not buying coffee every day. <laughs> No, buy coffee every day. We have a nice, they have actually have a really nice cafe there. So, you know, make sure you're energized for fest. Um, I guess, what about the, uh, the cocktails? In previous years, um, we had this whole concept of the Kirby cocktails, which we um, actually are not doing it this year around because, you know, we had tested them with our own Alonzo Nunez from Little Fish Comic Book Studio. He created the Kirby cocktails based on old vintage, uh, like, prohibition era recipes and it was cool but it's just like it's just one of the things where they taste good in trials but like when you're Execution. making them for yeah. mass produce it's like it, they don't turn out so well but it's not like to say you can't you know get a nice drink at the bar and unwind with your favorite comic creators around yeah especially mike royer especially mike royer <laughs> yes everybody likes grabbing a drink with mike royer and he especially loves drawing winnie the pooh characters for all the ladies at the bar on <laughs> on on bar napkins that's his favorite pastime, and I really look forward to grabbing another drink with Mike because Mike, he just ends up as the life of the party every single time. Um, I guess we can move on to the next round. Um, we'll move to the Thunder Round. Uh, we'll get Alex here. Alex, why don't you go ahead with the Thunder Round? All right. <clears throat> First question. China recently landed an unmanned spacecraft on a dark side of the moon. What do you think they discovered? Darkness. <laughs> no light also the uh home of the inhumans inhumans oh yeah maybe that uh <laughs> maybe that uh abandoned uh fortress where um you know that they that the x-men fought on during the uh, phoenix saga i think that might have been there too so that was cool <laughs> and also lots of cheese and cheese <laughs> green green cheese green cheese <laughs> all right looks like elon musk is uh shifting his attention from mars to the moon who will make it to the uh, moon first, Elon Musk or U.S. Space Force? Hmm. I'm going to have to say uh, Elon Musk, but I think he's probably just going to launch a car up there and just, like, put it up there just for free advertising. Just have it like, here's our moon car. Who, Check who's, it out. Who's going to be in the car? Starman. <laughs> they also mentioned that we're uh, celebrating 25 years of Starman with James Robinson, which will be hosted by our own T.J. Shevlin. So uh, <laughs> come by that. So Nice. And for, for any of you guys who don't know who TJ is, he's, he makes an awesome host. Yeah, so uh, he, this Starman is his all-time favorite comic, and he is going to have an absolute blast with this, too. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, a new probe is being launched to explore deep space. What kind of music would you add to its golden record? Hmm. I'd probably go for the Sonic the Hedgehog soundtrack. I really like Starlight Zone. I think that'd be a soothing, relaxing atmosphere because it's like the, the Sonic the Hedgehog soundtrack, you just never get tired of it. Hey, did you know that Michael Jackson actually composed the Sonic the Hedgehog soundtracks for 1 through 3? What? He did. You didn't know that. Michael wow. Jackson was actually the secret composer. We can throw in some uh, Scott Shaw illustrations on there too. Yeah. Um, I don't think he wants to talk about uh, Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> I issue zero. That's, uh, that's a long story. But uh, come to his panel. He'll tell you all about it. 
All right. You learn the difference between drawing a comic and drawing an advertising piece. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You make a first contact with an alien life form from another solar system. But being Matt Dunford, you're too busy to babysit. What three movies do you use to educate your new friends while you go out and take selfies? Um, I am too busy for my new um, alien friends. So, of course, you have to give a staple, E.T. And then Earth Girls Are Easy and Independence Day. (laughs) (laughs) The most important (laughs) lessons that you can learn. Welcome to Earth. Welcome to Earth. (laughs) All right. Let's pretend we are on... In Star Trek, when the food replicators were being developed, what dish would you want added to it? You know, I would probably just say chocolate mousse. It's, I, I don't really trust food from replicators, but I guess I, I, would, I guess I wouldn't trust protein constructs, but I think sugar constructs would be okay. I mean, if you can genetically engineer a chocolate mousse and have it be silky and smooth and nice, it's like, I'm okay with that. But... Yeah, I mean, it's just digitizing the flesh of an animal. That just seems weird. I mean, but th- keep in mind, they were doing it with the teleporters anyway, so. Ex- unless you're Spock's mom. Oh, too soon? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll never know because I don't, I don't know when they're going to make another movie. Oops. <laughs> um, I guess uh, the next set of questions or next uh, round is the artist alley segment of our podcast mm-hmm. um was is there any uh, recommended comic book or pop culture creative or creatives that you like our audience to know about oh and our artist alley i uh, got it you know it's like asking a parent who's your favorite kid you already you know but uh, you don't want to say to uh, upset the others there's definitely a lot of artist alley that uh you should uh Artist Alley folks that you should be checking out. Um, definitely check out uh, Jimmy Purcell, who does uh, Ben Better, Ben Better comic. He does a daily strip every Monday, and he's always very dedicated to his work. And he always, and uh, oddly enough, free sketches. He's always happy to do a free sketch for you. So he does a quickie sketch for you. They're always really funny and really nice. So highly recommend getting that sketch from Jimmy. I also highly recommend the Accidental Aliens. They are wonderful creators who put together this anthology piece, which I would openly call the best self-published comic around. And so, yeah, check out them. And yeah, those guys are you know pretty cool. Go check out them. They're, uh, they're definitely at uh, top of my list. I, I can't say any more without, uh, without upsetting a whole lot of other people. <laughs> um, I guess for our superhero shout out segment, um, is there anybody that you'd like to give thanks to? Because obviously we can't do the things we do alone. My superhero shout-outs. I definitely have to give some shout-outs. Um, I'm always very happy for anyone who has provided me with an opportunity for advancement. So I have to say to Ben Gleibert, who is the founder and publisher of Semantic Publishing. I have to say thank you to Ivan of Club Cosplay, who you know gave me the chance to entertain people as Weird Al on stage and everything. Um, to Alonso Nunez, who is the executive director of Little Fish Comic Book Studio, who has you know gave me the opportunity to educate and move myself forward, and First and foremost, to Mike Towery, the founder of Comic-Con and president of San Diego Comic Fest for giving me the opportunity to be chairman of San Diego Comic Fest and to unite a community and just put on a great time for everyone. I cannot thank him enough for all of that. Um, You mentioned Little Fish Comic Book Studios. (coughs) Um, For an audience that doesn't know what that is, um, do you want to tell them a little bit about it? So Little Fish Comic Book Studio is a comic education center here in San Diego, California. It's located in the uh, college area over by 70th Street. It is run by Alonzo Nunez, who is a graduate of the School of Visual Arts in Manhattan. It has been going on for about six years now. It is an all-ages school, so it takes kids, it takes adults, it takes private lessons. If you want to learn how to draw comics, if you want to learn how to write comics, if you want to learn how to do webtoons or anime, manga, animation, digital art, it is a cheap, accessible resource that brings you in for it. And it's just a wonderful place to be. It's got a great library. It's a great open community center and also great for the summer camps if you want to bring the kids around. And Little Fish Comic Book Studio will also be demoing uh, demoing lessons at San Diego Comic Fest. Oh, nice. This should be a good opportunity for the community to get to know them. Yes. Um, is there anything else about uh, this year's uh, San Diego Comic Fest that you'd like uh, 
our audience to know about? I help you attend, and I promise you that you will have a phenomenal time if you do. Everything is going to be awesome. Everything is going to be great. I mean, everything is awesome, just like a Lego song. Um, and I just hope you have a wonderful time. You can check us out at www.sdcomicfest.org. So there you can grab your tickets, hotel room, examine the guest list. Remember that kids under t- that 12 and under are always free. Also offering senior and active military discount, also student discount as well. So just come have a good time. If you love comics, cartoons, want to hang out with some legends of animation and who actually like worked with Walt Disney back in the day, we got those. If you're a big fan of Spider-Man, come to a Spider-Man 25th anniversary. And of course, if you're a big fan of science or moon science fiction, all that sort of thing, we've have, we, we, we're a convention that offers something for everyone. One person having a bad time at this event is too much for me. So come on in. We have some great entertainment and I promise you will have, a, you will have an absolute blast. Awesome. We're looking forward to it. All right. I'm looking I mean, forward to having you there, too. San Comic Fest is one of our favorites to go to, um, especially for its intimate feel. We love you know, getting, getting to know uh, the people that, that run it, like yourself, and also the artists that, that are involved and who attend. I mean, even just talking to people who, who, who are you know, regular con-goers, they, they seem to have a good time. Okay, good. As the thing is, I don't want people to get burned out of the comic convention experience. I know there's a lot of ones that get that pop up and they kind of fade away. And so like, I just want to be the one that lasts and know that it, what I'm doing is based on passion and making people have a good time. I want to feed off that energy and make sure I love to see people smile and laugh and talk about a convention experience for years on end and the great times they had. That's what I'm in it for. Awesome. Uh, once again, Samuel Comic Fest 2019 takes place on March 7th through the 10th at the Four Points by Sheraton on Arrow Drive here in San Diego, California. Uh, March 7th is a uh, Thursday, and it's sort of like a... a uh, it's sort of like a preview night event. Yeah. So, you know, get there in the afternoon, come and mingle and have a good time with your uh, your favorite comic creators there of the uh, event, and just have a just have a blast. So it's just like, so no pressure to attend during the day. We'll be setting up and making sure things are looking polished, pretty, and ready for you. So uh, getting uh, just getting the place ready for our, our events. But we'll be there for the evening part. Awesome. Uh, I guess we'll close out this show. Um, I guess, do you want to give out your social media, Matt? Yes, just uh, find me at uh, Facebook at Matt Dunford, M-A-T-T-D-U-N-F-O-R-D. Um, just at Matt Dunford at Twitter, at Matt Dunford on inst- on Instagram, or on Instagram, you can just find at SD Comic Fest, or just check out the San Diego Comic Fest Facebook page. Just type in San Diego Comic Fest, press going on our event page, push like on our on our social media thing and uh, just subscribe to that like nonstop dorkiness coming out of those like lame <laughs> memes and and ask questions somehow the social media guy knows the answer to just about everything and like all these common questions he must be a huge dork <laughs> it's always a pleasure uh, having you on uh, and, the Hall H show Matt and so. it's always a pleasure being on the show <laughs> uh, thank you for listening to the Holly show podcast We love putting the spotlight on some of our favorite pop culture and comic book conventions like San Diego Comic Fest. We can't wait for this year's celebration of the Apollo 11 moon landing. Thanks again for coming back on the show, Mr. Matt Dunford, Uncle Dunford himself. All right, and thank you so much for having me. Um, You can find the Hall H Show podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, even Spotify, and our website, hallh.com. If you believe in our mission to be the voice of independent creators, we would appreciate a rating, hopefully five stars, and a comment on iTunes. And please spread the word on social media using the hashtag HallHShow. Peace, cheers, and please make it a point to visit Artist Alley at all the conventions you plan on going to this year.